Hello, welcome to unit on optical networks. My name is Ray Wang. After a few lectures on basic concepts and elements of optical networks, today we will start the fourth lecture, multiplexing and switching in optical networks. First, I would like to ask a question. Do you know how the switching works in optical networks? In a short answer, Optical network switching is all about multiplexing and demultiplexing optical signal from one fiber to another. This is AWG, the device to multiplex and demultiplex optical signals. And to my right is the rodent to switch optical signals. That is all we are going to learn in today's lecture. In optical networks, there are three fundamental multiplexing techniques. Waveless division multiplexing, or WDM. Optical time domain multiplexing, or OTDM. And the last one, special division multiplexing, which is also known as SDM. Let's look at the WDM system first. Waveless division multiplexing, is perhaps one of the most important technology in optical networks. What it does is to multiplex optical signal with different wavelengths into the same fiber or port and demultiplex signals of different wavelengths from one port to different ports. I'm sure you all know what a prism is. A prism can be imagined as a basic WDM system. As light passes through this prism, it slows and bends, but different wavelengths bend at different angles. This separate lights into different wavelengths forming a rainbow of colors as shown here. A prism can be regarded as a demultiplexer or demux. Similarly, a multiplexer can aggregate or combine wavelengths from different special modes into the same fiber the diagram shows a simple WDM system which can combine and split light with the different wavelengths like a prism. We will discuss its architecture later. Why WDM is so popular in optical networks? First of all, it is of low cost. The WDM components and devices are relatively cheap compared to the bandwidth it can support. For example, the passive components like AWG thin film filters that learned from the last lecture can all play as important roles in WDM system. Second, it can support high bandwidth communication by combining multiple high data rate traffic in the same fiber. So in one fiber, there will be multiple channels with different wavelengths. Third, with the proper design, it can support switching functionality either in a passive way or in an active way. So the optical signal can be switched to the destination with assigned wavelengths. Last, it can scale easily. It allows complex switching architecture for high throughput optical network. WDM is popular, but a standard is needed to allow components to be compatible with each other. Currently, there are two types of WDM standard, coarse wavelength division multiplexing, or CWDM, and a dense wavelength division multiplexing, or DWDM. CWDM provides a fixed grid of 18 channels from 1271 nanometer to 1611 nanometer with 20 nanometer spacing between adjacent channels. Compared to DWDM system, CWDM components are relatively cheap to make and can use uncooled laser, which can reduce power consumption and allow operation in a wider range of the environment. However, CWDM can support transmission distance of up to 80 kilometers only, as there are no optical amplifiers that can operate at such wide spectrum range. Also, a spectrum efficiency is low. Theoretically, it can support up to 
18 channels, but in reality, only up to eight channels in our fiber. Compared to DWDM system, its components are less scalable with a few options in the market. Overall, CWDM is a cost-effective solution for short-distance optical networks. Compared to CWDM, DWDM operates between 15 30 nanometer and 16 25 nanometer, and it provides various channel spacings between different channels. Traditionally, the channel spacing can be 100 gigahertz or 50 gigahertz. Nowadays, with the development of elastic optical network, there's a new flexible grid of 12.5 gigahertz. Through the standard, the DWDM works at C-band and L-band. But the recent research in optical networks focus more on multi-band solution, aggregating S-band, C-band, and L-band optical signal over the same fiber. One of the disadvantages of the DWDM system is to require more space and a higher power consumption. For example, Cooler laser requires additional cooling system, which takes extra space and power. It also needs higher accuracy laser and the components, especially considering the new 12.5 gigahertz flexible grid standard. In general, its components are more expensive, but DWDM systems are very popular. Thus, the manufacturer cost has been largely lowered and the price are competitive compared to CWDM. DWDM can offer 80 channel in C-band. Thus, it provides much higher capacity than CWDM. What's more, the cost-effective optical amplifier is available at C-band and L-band, making it suitable for long-distance transmission. System using QPSK modulation format can reach more than 5,000 km or even 10,000 km transmission distance. At last, it follows pay as you expand the business model. You only need to pay what you need. The system can be aggregated easily in the future because it's highly scalable. With all these benefits, DWDM is the core technology in the optical networks and it is the main focus of this course. Now, Let's look at a simple point-to-point -point DWDM system. TX and RX here refers to optical transmitter and the receiver. TX transmitting optical signal are with different wavelengths are combined into a fiber via multiplexer. During the transmission, the signal suffers fiber loss. Therefore, ETFA, which is a type of optical amplifier, is used to compensate fiber loss in long distance optical communication. The MUX will separate optical signals to the final destination according to their assigned wavelengths. With this setup, TX1 is able to establish one way communication with RX1. And similarly, TXN is able to establish link with RXN. At last, Let's focus on reconfigurable optical ad draw multiplexer, or RODEM, which is the device shown to you in the early video. Due to the limited amount of time today, we are not going into the details of the architecture in the lecture. Basically, RODEM is an optical switching node that can be dynamically reconfigured to support switching, add, or drop different optical signals. Switching functions allows switch optical signal from one fiber to the other. For example, from west to east, as shown in the red flow. Add function allows to add local optical signal to a specific direction in the optical networks, such as from the local to the south direction. Similarly, drop function can drop the optical channels from the network to the local receivers in which optical signal terminates here. One example is shown in purple color.
Switching is an important function for Rodan. Let's analyze how the switching works for Rodan. This diagram shows one type of Rodan, and let's use it as an example. When optical signal bypasses this beam splitter, it can be regarded as creating multiple copies of optical signal, but at a lower power or energy level. The output of the beam splitter connects to different directions. For example, to the north, east, and south. It is a broadcasting way to send a signal to all destinations. However, we do not want a broadcasting optical network as it cannot scale. The goal is to guide certain wavelengths to the desired destination or directions. Therefore, wavelength selective switch at each direction is programmed to allow specific wavelength to pass and it will block the signal with the rest of the wavelengths. For example, in this case, the red signal can go to the east, but will be blocked by the north and south wavelength selective switch. In a big picture, the red optical signal is switched to the east port. Wavelength selective switch will combine optic signal with different wavelengths from different directions. For example, red from the west, yellow from north, and green from south. It combines those signals into one fiber and sends them to its direction. For edge function, the local optic signal with different wavelengths can be combined by a beam splitter and uh, be sent to a specific direction. As the rodent showing here is a four degree node, there are four local beam splitters, each associated with a direction. For example, this beam splitter is associated with the south, this one for the west, this one for the north, and this one for the east. And you can see here, it can combine local optical signal of the orange and the blue and send to the south direction. For drop function, it is the opposite way as the add function. Remember in the last slide, a copy of optic signal is sent to local. The local receiver can detect the optical channels via the passive DMAX according to the assigned wavelengths, as the purple signal showing here. To summarize, in this short lecture, we have seen what is WDM system, and we have discussed and compared CWDM and DWDM system. At last, we have gone through our DWDM transmission system and rolled them to support switching, add, and drop functions in optical networks. Now, please consider a task. Use what you have learned today to design a four-node ring topology optical network so that every node is able to communicate with each other. Here, I list some tips for this task, and we will come back to discuss it in our next lecture. At last, here I list two books and a paper that you can find more information on WDM system and the Rodom architecture design. Thank you for your attention. I hope you all enjoyed today's lecture, and have a nice day.